Hey guys, welcome to another Unity tutorial today, and this is going to be the fourth installment of the C Sharp beginner series. And today we're going to be looking at creating your own functions or where your own functions or methods would be used. Now, more often than not, if you're doing something, you might be, as we've learned if you've watched the previous videos, if you're using if statements and uh, conditional statements, so if you might have a certain amount of health left you might then eventually um, have zero health so that means you might die so you might write your own function so there's not so much content in the update function you might want to manage your code by writing new methods so I'll give you an example of this what we'll do is we'll right click in uh, unity and we'll start by creating a C sharp script and what I'm gonna call this is I'm gonna call this one functions for the ease of this sake now I'm going to open that up in model develop now once that's there what I'm going to do is I will start by deleting the um, starting methods that it gives us and if I look on the previous episode we have we had a conditional statement so we were looking at score and what score is equal to and we did some things with that now I'll give you an example of how we can use a method in this sort of thing so if we start by writing a public integer health so this is going to store our health that we'll give to the player now we can write void update so we're doing something in the update method so this will be done every frame now we could say that if health is ever less than or equal to zero then we can do something in here we might do 10 different things in here so we might want to split it up nicely and write our own method so then what we can do here is start by we want to decide what our method is going to be called so we could call it death so we'll write death two, bra two brackets after each other and I have a semicolon now what we'll then need to do is in between the first sort of set of curly brackets below the update function so you can see that those two curly brackets encapsulate the whole um, update method now we can write void death just as we'd, as we'd written it up there add two brackets afterwards then two curly brackets below again and you can see that then the syntax highly highlighting knows that it's a part of it so from there say you've got a few things in your update uh, method and you want to just keep it nice and neat we could have as many as we want say we had another if statement which said else if if health is ever greater than or equal to 50 let's say we've picked up lots of health then we could say i don't know this is just an example we could ha make another um, method called god mode and then under here we can have another method called god mode two brackets and then we can have two curly brackets below again and you can see here that we'll manage it in a way and we can have you know 10 lines of of, of code here nicely managed without it being in the update function so it just depends what you're trying to do and easily in any other place if in god mode i need to for some reason call death i can just write the same as i would and it would it would as soon as god mode is run so say here else if if the health is greater than or equal to 50 it will run or call god mode so it'll shoot down here go to god mode and then god mode is telling me oh i need to now do the uh, method death and it will run whatever's in death now like I said before, if you need to call a particular function or method from another script, you can do that. But one of the things that you do need to do if you want to be able to do that within C Sharp, you need to make sure that it's a public void. Because if you don't have the public at the beginning, it'll be classed as private. And private means it's just private to this script. So it won't be accessible outside of this script, if you may. If you make sure that's public, you will be able to access it outside of this script. So in our conditional script, we could um, say that if we hit the checkpoint, 
then we can actually call this function. Okay, so let's say that we do want to access this function from another script. What we can do is I will just write a debug line in here so we'll be able to see it in the reporter at the bottom. So we'll say I am here. So we'll just close that up. And so when we expect death to be executed, it will say I am here down at the bottom. Now what we can do is I can test this in Unity. So what we could do is I could add the functions script here and health is zero because we've not given it. So the update function will say, oh, we need to call the death method when the game runs. So when the game runs, you can see that health was zero and it is finding the or it is executing that we've done death. Now, like I said, you might want to be able to access it from a another script and just call this function once. So what we can do is in our conditional um, script or whatever script you might have, we can write a public variable and we can write functions, which is the name of our script, which we can see up here. And then we can name this other script and put a semicolon. So now it's saying that we've got a public a variable of other script, which we're going to look for functions here. Now, let's say that in here, if the score is equal to 50 and if there's a checkpoint, what we'll do is we'll get rid of this uh, debug log line and then we'll say um, other script dot get component and then what we want is two angled brackets then two brackets after that and then inside the get component angle brackets we want to say what the script that we're looking for so we're looking for functions then we'll say dot and we'll look for whatever um, new function that we're after so then we can type in death, make sure it's got a semicolon. So you can see that there, the other script, we're looking for a component. We're looking for the script, which is functions. And then what we're going to do is we're going to call death. And we expect that when score is equal to 50, and if we've got a checkpoint, we'll be able to um, execute that code. Now, what we can do is that in this function, I will make sure that I will take away the health so it doesn't do it when we don't want to. So in fact, I will delete that, all this from the update function. And now we can see that we've only got death and god mode and they'll never be executed until you tell them to. Now we'll go back in. I will remove um, I am here from the console just so that it doesn't confuse you. I'll put the conditional in there. And now it's saying that other script, and it's looking for whatever the other script is on. This is helpful if you've got it on a different game object than what it actually lives on. So I can add my whatever game object that it lives on. So it lives on, it's this one. And you could simply do it by saying that you could just say get component without the other script reference. But this is just an example of how to do it. So you drag what um, object that script is on. We needed to have a checkpoint and we needed to make sure the score was 50. Well, in fact, what we'll do is we'll make sure the score is zero. So we expect the function not to be called in the other script. So you can see that currently that's the running that the score is zero. Now, if I've got a checkpoint and now I set the score to 50, you can see that it's now saying that I am here. So it's always running the a function or method from the other script. So it's just a very simple way to make sure. And if I get rid of the public on the death and I now make sure that score is equal to 50 as soon as we start it's going to complain and it's going to tell me that it's inaccessible due to its protection level and that means that it's protected just to this script so as long as we've got a public we'll be ready to go so that's just a really nice way to organize and manage and 
um, sometimes just be able to call between other scripts and you can do that as many times as you need to. So hopefully this uh, maybe ironed some things out and helped you get to the next step of being able to write um, things for games. So thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.